Hi there, Andrew Jackson, AJ Design Studio. Got a video today of a production file uh, for a client of mine here in New Zealand called Racetech. And uh, Racetech produced racing car seats, composite racing car seats. And Racetech's been kind enough to allow me to uh, go over my SolidWorks models and my modeling approach for this particular product, which is the RT4100. So this, this racing car seat is, as I said, it's composite. So I'm modeling like a plug surface in all these models. The part doesn't actually get thickened, it gets thickened when the um, when the fiberglass or the carbon fiber etc gets laid up. Uh, there's two things I'm going to cover in this. First of all I'm going to cover uh, using master models and how to create derived, how I created the derived parts because there are four versions I believe of the seat and they were all driven from one master model and the second thing I'll do is I'll just sort of cover some of the modeling strategy like actually creating the forms so first thing i'll show you so this this is the standard seat with the head restraint as you can see here it's got a head restraint this is the version without the head restraint and if i open a size comparison here you can see there is a second uh, derived seat that is wider and also taller so these all uh, reference back to the base master model and there's also another part I'll show you which is referenced uh, which is an insert here which is basically to convert the tooling so you can make the uh, standard and the the head restraint version of one main plug model okay so I'll just jump over into a uh, an image that shows the sort of part structure and how everything's derived I started by modeling this master file which is the master surface file it has basically all the main surfaces in it including the head restraint surfaces and the non-head restraint surfaces and then that gets used into one two three four parts so using insert part this gets inserted in the top of the tree of the wide and tall master file and then the standard seat part the head restraint part and the inserts part and then so over here once it's inserted into this master file that master file so there's two masters uh, there's modifications made to the original master file in the wide and tall version uh, which are then inserted into three more parts which are the wide tall wide tall head restraint and insert so so there's two masters but this master here has the main this contains the main geometry and so anything that changes in here those those changes get pushed down to all the associated parts okay and there's no there's no references to any assemblies or anything they're, they're, they're just straight uh, references to the master or in the case of these parts over here they they reference the wide tool master which then references the the base master I know it's a bit to get your head around but it, it worked out quite well okay so over here I have this assembly and I've just assembled this so you can see the parts as they relate to each other so if I go into open up this this is the standard seat so the standard seat has a very small tree because basically it just pulls in data from the master file there's a body keep delete that gets rid of the HR like the head restraint surfaces etc then I uh, mirror over the bodies and then knit everything together these surfaces here these are for uh, belt holes etc and mounts they get cut in afterwards that's their, their strategy so so this surface here is the resultant rear surface of the seat this will get cut and then they pull a tool so this will be the plug model and then they pull a tool off that and then when they build up the composites this is the rear face so you get a nice glossy uh, surface on the rear of the seat and then it gets thickened forwards with the composites the front is covered with upholstery etc and foams so probably not quite as critical to have that surface uh, like a gloss finish as the rear so that's the standard seat if I jump over into my assembly and have a look at the head restraint version there's very much the similar thing going on because these surfaces are all built and they all exist like this flange around the outside this exists within the the master the base master file so again gets mirrored over knitted together and that's the HR head restraint version finished Okay, back in this assembly so these inserts here 
they are used so you can see what happens here if we get rid of those inserts and hide them and hide the standard whoops so we're looking from the rear here that's like the head restraint version if these blocks are added that converts it to uh, the standard version by filling in those voids and then they can pull a tool off that if that makes sense pull a tool body so they have the plug which I believe is looked after very well and the tool obviously there's wear and tear on that because that's what they're pulling the actual the the, the composite parts off so they have to um, make updates to the tool now and then and replace it so that's the standard uh, size seat assembly and parts so I'm going to jump over to the wide tool now and just cover those as well okay here we are the wide tool parts so we'll have a look at the head restraint part first again this is very similar to the standard size the tree is very small because it's pulling in most of its surfaces from the wide tool master and the wide tool master references the standard master okay so in this file we're just mirroring things over knitting together and using body deletes to clean up um, surfaces that are unneeded and in the standard seat as well it's the same a line of drawer insert part the wide tool master and then some operations so i'll open up the master file now and we'll have a look at that okay so this is the master file so i've modeled one half as you can see and we've got the the main surfaces that get uh, inserted into the actual parts for mirroring and knitting together so in this kind of model as you can see it's there's quite a lot of features surface model um, if we go evaluate have a look at the performance evaluation here so 486 um, features rebuild time's not too bad it's got more than nine surfaces i can tell you that it's because it's cleaned up with the bodies uh keep delete at the end as i said before draft is a big consideration with this so the main line of draw we wanted to go basically for zero degrees um, or like quarter of a degree so along these surfaces in here so we managed to hit that because the parts are large and it's composite i believe there's a little bit of uh, wiggle room to uh, detool the part uh, so that's why the draft angle is fairly low there but it's not undercut i'm going to roll back through this model and just cover the main sort of blocks of geometry uh, and the strategy sort of or the approach for creating it okay first up quite a lot of construction just to get main sort of uh, side and front elevation forms so these control quite a lot of the downstream uh, features okay and we're starting modeling from the from the bottom up so these are all surface features so creating the lower sort of tub forms and making sure we're all within draft here so that that draft was very shallow as i said but it's still got a uh, taper on it which is the critical thing okay creating the main fillet up the back here and then starting to open that fillet out into the shoulder area so all these are fairly adjustable via sketches as well okay so that's into the shoulder the main shoulder blend and then up into the head and these surfaces here they don't match up yet because there's a, a beam area that goes in here so they don't actually need to marry up at the moment doing some changes down here on these blends as you can see adding like a recessed area adding draft nothing at all back in okay Okay, this is the beam area I mentioned, so there's a couple of planar faces in here uh, and then they interrupt these surfaces here and I've blended in this area. Again, all surface features, controlled with splines, style splines. Okay, that's all trimmed and knitted together. So these are sort of like the primary surfaces and then there's blends that go in over the top of these like so so areas getting cut back and then blends being added in 
So of the primary surface, that's the only piece that's left because it all gets trimmed back. But if you don't build the primary surface out to its uh, theoretical edges, then you don't know where your blends need to uh, really go or, or where they terminate. So again, this has been trimmed right back. So adding the blends in first that terminate on that planar face and then patching in the larger blends on the ends afterwards. And then knitting it all together. And then I modelled the head restraint. So again, head restraints controlled uh, with elevational sketches that control things, splines, etc. And then remembering this head restraint has to match back up uh, into the existing standard seat form. Like so. So this comes back in and then blends in with the rest of the main form down here. Okay, next up is the returns. This, this is a trickier area because the returns uh, need to have a constant radius. Remembering this is the back of the seat. So when this gets uh, built up with composites, this gets thickened forwards. So quite a few lofts and sweeps. So that's a sweep. Oh, that's a loft, sorry. And some of them have variable sections uh, to control the, the twist, as you can see there. So I've got a constant radius, and then this angle here will vary depending on uh, what the client wanted the return to do dimensionally. To flare out or, or keep it within a certain sort of envelope so that runs all the way up and then that's got a variable section and drops in diameter up here so it gets tighter as you can see it drops down to an r5 and again got the angle uh, and then a set distance on the return and the same thing happens with the head restraint returns and then this flange is added to the head restraint, which is pretty much mainly built out of rolled surfaces. So this is for the tooling. And then mounting points. Uh, so the mounting points are for your harnesses, brackets, etc. And as I said earlier, these are just extrudes. Uh, they are then added um, later to the tool, whether it's whether it's just a like a witness line, etc., that then gets picked up for trimming. So not actually making a cut within this model so I will go over and have a look at the how I made the derived master now which is the wide tool version okay so here we are this is the wide tool version so I think the most important thing here is just to just to cover off how you can make derived parts so this uh, has the original master file inserted at the top so I've, I'm just going to roll back and just cover off the um, the largest edits to it to create the derived version. Okay, so the client identified uh, a couple of areas where dimensionally they wanted the seat to change. Uh, so then I went through and deleted faces and added some body moves. So you saw the body there. So the whole lower section moved outwards with this body move. And then I trimmed back this area here because this was going to move as well. So you see there, uh, that's how everything got taller. So that's just a, a move copy, basically. More delete faces to clean up areas because I need to have space to add blends back in between the areas that have moved. Okay, because these ran through to tangent, this this uh, band down the middle here is a, just a straight extrude to make up the extra width. But then it wasn't quite so simple down here where I have to use boundary surfaces as blends. And a loft out there and another boundary in there so this is all uh, additional new geometry to blend in between the two sections that have moved and then a similar exercise up the top here except probably a little bit more complicated because of the tighter curvature changes so 3d sketches and then start patching on smaller boundary surfaces Boundary blends, like so, and then knit it all together, like that. So there was a little bit of uh, to and throwing, like trying to figure out how to 
to blend things together the best way but uh seems to work quite well i've done this a few times now on a few different racing uh seats so produce the uh the hr the head restraint version and the standard version and the master and then those master files as i've shown you already they get uh inserted into the other parts the wt and the wthr okay so i think that pretty much wraps it up i've covered most of what i wanted to do which was cover off the master file and insert part and creating derived parts and also just sort of the the overall modeling strategy for creating this i don't really want to go into nitty gritty on creating each surface because that would end up with a very long video yeah the biggest takeaway i think is for me is that using insert part and master files like this you know you do have quite a lot of control and it, it's quite a robust way to create uh, not only derived parts but derived twice like you know creating a master that's derived from something else um, and sharing geometry between parts without using an assembly so you're really limiting the um, the references to an easily manageable sort of system yeah and i'd also just like to say thanks to uh, race tech for letting me share this and i hope people out there find this useful uh, it's quite nice to be able to show uh, production models for a change uh, rather than just sort of working on theoretical or showing exercises uh, or experiments in solidworks so thanks for watching have a good day andrew jackson aj design studio bye